back to Hannity's America with the presidential election just about a month away. The economic crisis facing our country is a serious situation that both candidates say they are committed to fixing. But Democratic nominee Barack Obama may have closer ties to this debacle than he wants to admit. The United States is facing its biggest economic crisis since the Great Depression. Financial institutions are going bankrupt. The stock market is reeling and families all over the country are losing their homes. With the presidential election just weeks away, rescuing the economy is by far the most important issue facing the candidates. Democratic nominee Barack Obama likes to blame the economic crisis on President Bush and the Republicans, but it's actually the Democrats whose fingerprints are all over this mess, and it's the Illinois senator himself who has ties to this shameful debacle. It all started in the 1990s when greedy mortgage companies started handing out loans to people who clearly couldn't afford to pay them back. Now, I'm no economist, but isn't that Finance 101? It was Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that bought up a lot of those subprime loans. As a result, both mortgage giants beefed up their portfolios with billions of dollars in risky loans, many of which were destined to fail. Top executives, well, they continue to take their sky-high salaries until earlier this month when Fannie and Freddie had to be rescued by the federal government. So what does this all have to do with Barack Obama? Well, two of the presidential nominee's advisors are knee-deep in the Fannie Mae mess. Longtime Washington Democrat James Johnson was the CEO of Fannie Mae from 1991 to 1998. Johnson was forced to step down after a controversy surfaced regarding millions of dollars in questionable real estate loans, but not before he made off with millions in salary. But despite Johnson's shady dealings, the Obama campaign has asked him to be an advisor on the panel that vetted possible running mates for the presidential candidate. As a matter of fact, he led the selection process. Now back to Fannie Mae. Former Clinton budget director Frank LaRange picked up where Johnson left off. Reigns was CEO of Fannie Mae from 1999 to 2004. It was on his watch that Fannie Mae started buying billions of risky mortgages, and those deals netted Reigns, get this, a cool $90 million in his five-year reign. According to the Washington Post, Reigns was chosen by the Obama campaign to advise them on, get this, mortgage and housing policy. And the dirty dealings go even deeper. Both Reigns and Johnson had several personal dealings with Countrywide Mortgage while they were leading Fannie Mae into disaster. As Hannity's America reported some months ago, Countrywide was one of the biggest offenders in the subprime lending mess. And earlier this year, the company had to be rescued by the Bank of America to keep it from completely going under. That was right after its CEO, Angelo Mazzillo, sold the stock and took the money and ran. While Johnson and Reigns were both considered to be, quote, FOA, that's Friends of Angelo, and they were granted sweetheart deals on millions of dollars in personal loans. And for the record, Johnson took out three loans and a home equity line of credit from Countrywide, accounting to over $7 million. Now, Reigns was a repeat customer, refinancing a $1 million loan several times at well below average rates. And by the way, another high-ranking Democrat served as vice chairman of Fannie Mae while Reigns was CEO. And that's Clinton Justice Department official Jamie Gorlick. She's also known as the author of the, quote, Wall of Separation. That's the wall that kept the CIA and the FBI from sharing terror information before 9-11. She took in $26 million during her tenure at Fannie Mae. Now, if Obama's associations with these characters isn't enough, well, here's the kicker. According to the Center for Responsive Politics, the top three U.S. senators getting big Fannie and Freddie political bucks were Democrats. And guess who was number two? That's right, Senator Barack Obama, who received over $126,000. So somehow the four-year senator received more money from Fannie and Freddie than longtime Democratic Senator John Kerry, and he came in second only to the Senate Banking Committee Chairman, and that's Chris Dodd of Connecticut. Senator Obama says he wants to fix the economic crisis facing our nation, but it was his opponent, Senator John McCain, He's the one who sounded the alarm about this impending disaster years before. When Senator McCain joined as a co-sponsor of the Federal Housing Enterprise Regulatory Reform Act of 2005, 
He said the following, and it's in the congressional record. He said, quote, if Congress does not act, American taxpayers will continue to be exposed to the enormous risk that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac pose to the housing market, the overall financial system, and the economy as a whole. Now, that was nearly three years ago. Now, Obama would do well to stop trying to point the finger at Republicans for the economic crisis when it's members of his own inner circle that directly are responsible. And coming up next, ever since he started running for the White House, Senator Barack Obama has been backtracking on his word, and you won't believe the number of things that he has flip-flopped on. And then later, Ainsley Earhart.